that eh? I love you and I was so happy <laughs> and glad that I could come and see you. Who is the granddaughter? Turin, my you. granddaughter. <laughs> okay, can say something? It was nice to see you, my niece. You too. Thanks for your accommodation. Anytime. Yeah, you are as pretty as pretty can be. As pretty as can be. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I love Kayla, come say something. Kayla, she's a drink and a drink. Say something. Say hi. What's your name? Stay, Emma? So <laughs> <laughs> my name is Kayla. Emma! Kayla! Emma! <laughs> Look here. Say Kayla. Emma! Not Emma, Kayla. Emma! I need your mercy. I still need your mercy. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Glad to have you back for another video and if you are new here welcome to the channel feel free to like and subscribe and share after you watch it if you've enjoyed the video in Thank today's you. video guys we are going to talk about the tongue yes this little guy we are gonna talk about the tongue the bible says in psalms 34 13 keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit it is our responsibility to control this little guy to control our tongue and a lot of people find it really really hard to control their tongue majority of the people in the world and in the church find it so hard to control our tongue our tongue is like a little fire it can set a lot of things ablaze like the word of god says and it causes a lot of troubles and a lot of times a lot of things in our lives or that's happening in people's lives is because of the tongue. We slander, we lie, people do all sorts of things with the tongue. The Bible also says in Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. Which means if you love death or you love life, depend on which one you love, that's what you're gonna eat. Our lives is a result of a lot of things that comes from our tongue. For example, I know in my flesh, I have a really bad temper. My, my temper is so bad that when it gets out of control in my flesh, I can't think straight. And I may say a lot of things that I actually mean. Um, they're not things that I don't mean because the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks right so a lot of times when people are in their anger they will bring up and see a lot of things and then they'll say they don't mean them i mean them and so i do my best to walk in the spirit i walk in the spirit because i don't want to fulfill that lust of that flesh that anger and say things that could cause death in the life of the person that i'm speaking to which in turn will cause me to sow something into my life that I don't want. So every day I ask the Holy Spirit to help me when it comes to self-control that I may live in the fruit of the Spirit, right? I want to make sure I live in self-control and I'm controlling my anger. I'm responsible for that with the power that the Holy Spirit empowers me with to walk in the fruits that are already inside of me and so I'm very careful what I say to people all the time and because I don't want to look back and say oh I've hurt this person with these words because you know they always say six sticks and stones can break my bones but words cannot hurt me that is a lie that is a deceptive twisted lie from the devil because words kill words hurt way more than sticks and stones yes sticks and stones they may hurt the body but the body can heal and yes they can kill you but words cut to the heart when god was creating this earth god spoke god spoke things into being and we're made in god's likeness and god's image and we do the same there was something that me and my husband decided we would not do when he came to raising our son it was we won't say any bad things to him and he thinks he's like the catch meow as they would say because we wouldn't speak anything that will destroy 
or bring death to him for as long as I can remember. And no matter what he did, it was always words of encouraging, words that correct, but never words that bring death. There's a difference. You know, I've, I've been in places where I see people speak to their kids and they'll say to their children, you're stupid or you're an idiot, those type of words. So be careful what you say to your children. Be careful what you say to people in general. Words, people remember what you say, especially when it's hurtful words. They cut people's heart. I remember certain things certain people say to me and I have to bring it to God and leave them there. A lot of times when I remember these hurtful things that were said. And so, like I said, me and my husband, we committed that we are not going to say anything that we will regret to our child. And I can't remember that we have ever done so. We would speak together. We would, we would correct each other if we felt like something happened and somebody was in anger. We'll make sure to call each other out and say, no, let's stop here before we say something we don't, we're going to regret in the future. And we don't really want to say and because we're angry in that moment, we want to make sure we are not saying the wrong thing that we'll regret later on. So if you have kids, if you have grandkids, it's so important that you only say what God says about them to them. There's a difference from correcting a child in love than correcting out of anger. You never want to do anything in anger. The Bible says be angry, but sin not, right? So you can be upset about something, but you have to be very careful. There's a very thin line where your tongue might lead you to say things that you may regret. So you want to make sure you're staying in line with what God wants us to do. And so I've committed that for myself that I'm not going to say anything contrary to God's word about my child, um, about my husband. I always want to say and believe what God says about them all the time. So if you have children, grandchildren, make sure you speak God's word, word over them. No matter what you see, you say what God says because God wor God's word is truth and it is life. It is the only thing that can bring life to a person. It br can bring dry bones back to life. God's word is powerful. So we want to say what God is saying. What do we do if we feel like we're somebody who we speaks a lot, right? The Bible says in the multitude of words, sin is not lacking. So if you find yourself where you speak a lot, you're always talking. It means sin is somewhere behind, but he who refrains his lips is wise, which means we should study to be quiet. This is found in Proverbs 10, 19. It says, it says also in Proverbs 17, 28, even a fool is counted wise when he holds his peace. When he shuts his lips, he's considered perceptive. That's Proverbs 17, 28. Even our very life is hinged on the words that we speak from off our tongue. It says in Proverbs 13, 3, he who guards his mouth preserves his life. But he who opens wide his lips shall have destruction. There it goes again, talking about that death and life situation. A lot of times our life depends on what comes out of our mouth. We can be in a situation where the devil is attacking our body. And in that moment, you might be in pain. The, the, the results that you got from the doctor was not what you were expecting. And it's all going to come down to what you say next. What comes off your mouth next is going to determine your destruction or your life. Are you going to speak what you're seeing? Are you going to speak what they're saying? Or are you going to speak God's word? And you always want to speak life. You always want to speak what God is saying. Study to be quiet. So I urge you guys to study this out for yourself. Grab your Bible, grab your concordance, pull up all the scripture that talks about the mouth and the tongue and study to be quiet. Know when to speak and when to be quiet. A lot of times you're probably on social media and as you're scrolling, a lot of times it's, it's better to be quiet than to get into confrontation, strife, contention with people over silly debates 
about stuff in the Bible or stuff in the word, the world. It's better to just be quiet, listen to the Holy Spirit and speak as he leads us to speak. So today I urge you to be quiet, know when to speak. Remember, death and life is in the power of the tongue and they that love it. Do you love death or do you love life? Whichever one you love is what you're probably seeing in your life today. But I urge you to choose life today. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this video. And let me know how you're going to study to be quiet. And if you've ever had any situation where your tongue has led you into trouble or your tongue has led you into a great and marvelous situation where you spoke life into a situation that there was death and saw the power of God move. So leave a comment below. And remember, Jesus loves you. And Jesus Christ is Lord. I'll see you in the next one.